Greetings on this fourth week of Lent. My name is Jim Lapp, and as I sit with you this morning, I want to talk about the spirit of joy during Lent. During this season, we prepare ourselves for the drama of Holy Week, the pathos of Good Friday, and the marvel of Easter and the empty tomb. It's a solemn season in the life of the church, marked by the color purple, indicating a time of sorrow, introspection, and repentance. Some people mark Lent with the discipline of not eating certain foods or refraining from some activity as a part of their journey to, uh, with Jesus toward the cross. Of course, our society observes the beginning of Lent with Mardi Gras, parades, and festivities. And I grew up with Ash Wednesday being marked by eating donuts on the day before Lent began. But overall, the church, for the church, Lent is a solemn time, marked by deeper reflection and awareness of our humanity, and the way our lives often fall short of living up to our own ideals. I confess that I've not always enjoyed Lent because it awakens in me and reminds me of my own spiritual failings. It sometimes feels like it's sitting in a revival series in the church and hearing the pleading voice of an evangelist stirring in my conscience. I know that's my own issue, not the fault of Lent or the passion of a preacher, but I grew up with a tender conscience and a need to again and again reclaim that it is by grace that we're saved and not due to our goodness or our deeds. For that I'm forever grateful. The gift of God's love not measured by our perfection offers freedom that I delight in day after day. I suspect others of you know what I'm talking about. But it's also true that Jesus said some hard things about those who would be followers of him. To deny self, to take up the cross, to leave everything else behind and give ourselves to the singular goal of following in the footsteps of Jesus. Wonderful stories can be told about people who take this literally and abandon the human opportunities for success and devote their lives to the less fortunate. We idealize Mother Teresa and others who reject poverty, privilege for poverty, and give their lives for those who are in great need. How did Jesus approach the cross? In John's Gospel in the days leading up to Holy Week, Jesus did some amazing things. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He washed the disciples' feet, and he offered to them teaching on the Holy Spirit, who's our comforter and empowerment for life. I expect Jesus prayed a lot in those last days. In John 17, we have a long prayer of Jesus for the unity of the church, that God's love would keep and sustain all his followers. Jesus seems to know there's going to be suffering, but his dying wish was for the flourishing of the disciples. And then on the eve of the crucifixion, he offered these amazing words. Abide in me, he said. Abide in my love. And then he added this statement, so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Did you get that? Abide in me and abide in my love so that your, my joy may be in you and 